Hi, my name is Alex Ravankov, and I'm a director of uh, GTC Bio, uh, one of the leaders in conference organizing business. Today we are going to interview uh, Dr. Stephen Clark, the world authority in protein uh, damage and protein repair. And we are with uh, Dr. Stephen Clark, and uh, thank you so much, Dr. Clark, for inviting us here to the uh, University of California at Los Angeles and uh, your beautiful microbiology lab, and uh, this is where all this uh, great study and research is being conducted. Now, one of the things that took us uh, and brought us here today was the fact that we had met you on January 7th down in San Diego for the Aging Conference. So before we get too far down the road with uh, all the great things that you're doing, we'd like to kind of uh, see what you took away from that conference uh, back on January 7th. Well, you know, Ron, it was, it's wonderful for you to be here, and it was actually wonderful to be at that conference because, you know, people have complained about aging conferences in the past, saying that um, you go to an aging conference, you get stupider, you go to two of them, you get twice as stupid. But, you know, because the field is a very broad one, people have lots of different ideas. But what we saw in San Diego is these ideas are coming together, and we're getting a nice picture of what we call health span, which is basically living a long time and living very healthy. And the excitement of the meeting for me was to get some of the molecular mechanisms that are um, behind that. And I came away with that with a new optimism that basically we can um, at least delay the inevitable decay in all physiological functions with aging. And um, basically, hopefully all of us can, you know, at 100 years old, you know, be um, you know still going strong. Did even you? If we're not going at 101. Exactly. I was going to mention though uh, of the of the speakers that were at that conference. Uh, which ones uh, were you uh, taken with, as it were, uh, and what they had to say? If you can recall. You know, I think I think you know the nice thing of the meeting was that you had a, a variety of people with a variety of messages, but all together those messages were important. Certainly, it was wonderful to hear Michael Rose and Lenny Garenti. But it was also the others who were actually in the trenches and doing the work that that, that was exciting to see. Do you uh, did you uh, did you feel that there was going to be some uh, therapeutic uh, final product coming out of all of this? You know, I'm often not optimistic about that. You read in the newspaper new cancer cure, you know, new something that's going to do aging, and I think the public is a little bit um, wary of that because there's been so many promises made in the past. But from what I saw at the meeting, I began to think that there is there is some bright light. And that bright light may be trying to come up with compounds that will fool the body into basically being more careful in its metabolism. Would you, would you mind, uh, I hate to do this to you because I know it's like going back to second grade, but there's a lot of the, our viewers who are new to the aging uh, understanding. They're new to, uh, uh, they're, they're trying to figure out whether they just take vitamins and live longer <laughs> or not. And so one of the things is we have to kind of define the terms. And one of the, one of the, you know, we start with DNA, and then we go from DNA to molecules or to protein or to uh, 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 enzymes or whatever. And uh, can you kind of explain those, the, a little few of the differences? Yeah, look, I think the, the basic point is, is that to make us function, we need complex molecules. And molecules are just collection of atoms, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur. And you can put, you know, in a molecule of methane, you know, the gas that cows emit that, that make a contribution to global warming. That's just a carbon atom with four hydrogens attached to it. That's a simple molecule. The molecules that make us up don't have five atoms. They might have 5,000 or more atoms. And these molecules are DNA that um, encodes our, our genetic blueprint a variety of RNA molecules, and a variety of protein molecules, which are long chains of 20 amino acids, chains from 100 to um, 1,000 or more um, of these residues, and these long chains fold up and function. And each one of them has a specific function? Each one of them has a specific function. We may, a, a given cell might have 15,000 different proteins, and it might have 5,000 different small molecules. So extremely complex. And the idea is, how do you keep us going? 
Now, you know, you could, I always like the example of things that are less complex, okay? So something that's less complex, um, equally beautiful perhaps, is a newly baked lemon meringue pie, okay? So, a bunch of molecules go in, you have a wonderful pie, okay? It comes out of the oven, okay? An hour later, it's still great, right? But now, you want that lemon meringue pie to age, right? So you let it sit out. By the next day, it's probably still okay, but it doesn't look as quite as good. And you come back a week later, and uh, it might not taste so good, but we're expecting our bodies to be born and come back 100 years later and still have it working, okay? And that's the essential problem that I see in aging, is that the molecules that make us up are deteriorating at a rapid rate. So we have to put ourselves in the refrigerator. So we either have to put ourselves in the refrigerator, but the body has lots of great tricks, okay? One trick, there's a series of milk commercials that you may remember, you know, someone saying there's a new you coming every day. You know, your proteins are turning over. You're breaking down the old ones, you're making new ones, and that's fantastic because in making new proteins, you can have a new start in life. The fact is, though, that we still go downhill slowly, and um, uh, human at 70 may have 16% of the gray matter of a human at 20. Really? Lung capacity, heart rate may all go down by a similar fraction. So basically we're holding ourselves together somehow. And the question is, how do we hold ourselves together? In the face of our molecules breaking down, what do we do? Now, one great trick, and this actually was important in the meeting, one great trick is, hey, if a cell gets old, just duplicate it, make a new one. And if we make new cells, we can potentially live forever. And that we do to a certain extent. And that's the whole thing of stem now, cells. Now, we, I'm going to interrupt here because we, we're, we're so dangerous. We know just so little that we're very dangerous, as you know. <laughs> and one of the things is that cell division uh, is a repetitive uh, cycle that goes on. And, and there's something, uh, was it the serotonins that, that actually divide and then get shorter and shorter? Or is it the those, telomeres? Those are the teleomeres, okay. So teleomeres. Now, what are they? What do okay. they do? What do so, they do? The way our DNA information is packaged, it's packaged into long strands, okay? And those strands have ends. When we replicate the DNA, we can replicate the middle easy, but when we come to the end, we always leave off a few pieces of the end. So every time we replicate our DNA, it gets a little shorter. And that's a problem, because it gets shorter, you start losing good genes. So the trick that we do is we put on some fake DNA on the end, telomeres, and it's basically just a fake DNA sequence on the end. It's just an extra spacer, so that when we lose stuff, we lose the spacer, we don't lose the good genes. Right. Okay, the problem is, is that we put on the spacer, and if we live too long or to have ourselves divide too many times, we run out of spacer. And when you run out of spacer, then you start hitting the good genes. And that's Which the causes the cancers and the other things possible. Well, no, well, that causes the aging. Now, the interesting thing is there's a seesaw between aging and cancer. We could live forever if we weren't concerned about cancer. And we probably, if we didn't want to age very long, we probably could, could knock out cancer. And this is the whole thing. A cell gets up in the morning in our body. That's one big question to ask that day. Do I divide today or do I not divide? Okay? That's a big question. And you know, our cells can divide every 8 to 12 hours or so. And in fact, so if our cells were dividing all the time, we'd be doubling in mass every day. So most of our cells aren't dividing. They're kept in control. And only when you want a cell to divide for a purpose will you do it. Right? What happens in cancer is that that control is lost. And a cell that's not supposed to be dividing is dividing. And this is where the problem with aging comes. The problem with aging is that if we want to have new cells, we keep them dividing. But if we have mechanisms that allow cells to keep dividing, then it's easy for cancer to have a runaway. Uh -huh. So Geron Corporation is wonderful because these people started out as an anti-aging corporation. And what they wanted to do was make our telomeres longer so we had never run out of that space. Is that and possible? It is possible, but it comes at a price. You know what the price is? No. Cancer. 